taken snap here. I'm going to be talking about my rap radicalization. Um, if you want it simplified into one word, it would be Anthony Fantano. But obviously the story is much longer than that. I think in the very beginning, um, when I was a child, I, I, I'm going to start with how I got into music at all. When I was maybe like seven or younger, I didn't really understand music at all. Like these sounds coming from the radio, they were just noises that I didn't connect to at all. But it truly was like a life-changing experience when I realized that artists out there were making music that people were meant to like. And uh, that's when I started uh, making a YouTube playlist of songs that I liked on my brother's channel that he didn't enjoy, but whatever, I kept doing it. And um, it was just, it was mostly just online. Um, like there were... I read and link songs and there were probably some others that were just ge general pop um, and just songs from movies that I liked and that was pretty much the extent of it. It was stupid and it was boring and then I made another one because I realized that playlist is getting too long called Funkalicious Funky Funk Music. It was literally mostly just, it was either video game music that I just happened to stumble upon, or it was the Scott Pilgrim vs. The World soundtrack. And um, what's kind of funny is that at the end of that playlist, it, I started getting into anime, that's why I put the Soul Eater uh, OST on there. And it kind of perfectly described what I was into at the time and how it all connected with each other. After that, I made the some anime openings that I like because I'm into that. And that has like 500 entries into it because I realized the length of the um, playlist didn't matter at all and it's just going to be what it is. That's a playlist that I still sort of update to this day. But ever since that, I've made many, many more playlists that are about different things. I don't know if I ever explained my YouTube playlists um, or why I have so many. Maybe it's in the YouTube video about YouTube. Anywho. So yeah, after that, really my um, connection to music is literally just whatever I happen to stumble upon because of YouTube recommendations. And it sometimes gives something real good that sticks within my head for a long while. Um, that's when I realized that music can be defined into different genres. I mean, I knew that for a while, but I started getting into different genres. Uh, Japanese city pop was a big one. Uh, J-rock. Any songs? Yeah, no, they were all Japanese. Uh, that's awkward. Also, I just started to get into entire artists' discography, but I not listening to their albums. I just found a playlist that had all of their songs, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to get into this. It's mostly just like, uh, how do I explain it? Edgy opera um i'll just say the artist's name love solfage and alley project um, they made a couple of annie songs and i got introduced to them because of that they were pretty underground but uh i listened to them while i was doing other things and it worked out pretty well which is weird i didn't looking back i didn't really enjoy their aesthetic too much but whatever after that, I think the big major change that I had was discovering Death Grips. Um, I knew they were a band. I knew they were they had some kind of cult um, around them that vehemently enjoyed their music. And um, I wanted to try it out because I thought, okay, uh, this the type of people that 
would listen to Death Grips would usually include me, you know, quiet kid back of the class, so let's go. And I thought it was just, it was too new wave for my tastes. But when sports came out in 83, that's when I, they, they came into their own artistically and commercially. Okay, now, uh, enough of that. Death Grips is good. Um, I re-listened to them again just one afternoon. I needed to listen to something while I was doing something else. Um, and I got really into it. They were incredibly hype. The, their vocal performance is insane to agree. I never expected music to ever connect with me really. And I've never been like a metal guy at all. So the fact that they're, you know, metal um, or rock, I always thought was just screaming. Uh, but when you combine that with fast paced hip hop and like some EDM like production, uh, I think it hit me a, a stronger than anything I heard of before, basically. So yeah, that's uh, how I got into Death Grips. Their hooks are so catchy and earwormy that they permeate throughout my everyday life all the time, and I can't get them out of my head even if I tried. It, it kind of hurts. Like when I was really into them, when I first discovered them, it's I was possessed. Like I just, I kept shouting them uh, during class. It was very bad. It's like, oh my, why is this guy getting hyped up over nothing? Like the teacher's just talking about shit. Why is he just uh, moving around in a sea like that and, and looks like he's screaming something? Uh, what a weirdo. Anyways, I think one big reason why I got into Death Grips is because, <clears throat> yeah, uh, first of all, they are inherently catchy. Second of all, he's screaming the vocals. And because of those two things, I wanted to say them in my head because catchy things are catchy. And because he's screaming them, I have to scream as well. Like, you know, in a pop song, when there's something catchy, you want to sing the chorus as well. But in Death Grips, you got to scream the chorus. And that's why I like it, because it gets you immediately hyped up and energetic. I was like, fuck yeah. Anywho, um, after that... I don't really remember how I got into Pantano specifically. <clears throat> I remember just going through his channel and going from the most popular thing, which was <clears throat> to Pimp a Butterfly. I listened to that. And I did think it was a very solid album, even though the way that I consume albums is just is very is, isn't great. I usually don't even pay attention to them um, because I'm just busy doing something else. But yeah, To Pimp a Butterfly is pretty special. And I thought, damn, this production is um, insane, incredibly high quality, super classy. I just thought it wasn't meant for me because um, I'm not really I'm not the kind of guy to pay attention to what I'm listening to but I still need something to be played in the background instead of just silence you know um, hopefully there'd be something catchy in there that would really hit me but whatever <clears throat> I, re I listened to Fantano's review after that and uh, yeah I think his To Pimp a Butterfly review is, is a classic. I remember the intro and um, the things he's saying. It's very special. But what's weird is that even nowadays, I still think Fantano's videos are kind of boring, Like even though they are very technical and um, very analytical compared to many other uh, reviewers out there. Which is weird, because I'm very into an analytical anime reviews, 
yours truly, the not me, not me, the Digi Bros, uh, Trixie the Golden Witch. She is basically the Fantano of anime, uh, but I enjoyed her content much more than Fantano's. I feel like one reason why is because she is a lot more personal and puts out her character much more than Fantano's. Um, we don't know too much about um, Anthony Fantano's personal life, but we do know hers very well. Or at least a lot more than any other person on the internet, usually. So yeah, now I'm just in the spiral, the cycle of listening to a bunch of Anthony Fantano reviews. I'm listening to an album beforehand, and then I listen to him explain it. Maybe he says something about a track that's like, Oh, this part was really affecting me. And I'm like, all right, I got to go re-listen to that if there's something good in it. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's basically what's happening. This probably won't end uh, soon because I think he has thousands of videos and thousands of album reviews. Um, but I'm currently just skimming off the top of what's popular. Uh, and then maybe I'll get deeper after that. Is this video getting too long? Eh, I don't care. Um, 